Welcome back to Sensible 2020. I'm your event host, Seth Adler. Thank you so much for letting me do this. Roisin Downs is your panel host. This panel is CND 2020, what we're doing at the United Nations. I can't wait for it. Roisin Downs, take it away. Hi, everyone. So thank you so much for joining our panel. Um, we are going to talk about what SSDP does when it advocates at the highest level of um, you know, international advocacy that exists. We're going to talk a little bit about how we attended the Commission on Narcotic Drugs this year and we attend every year and that's the functioning body of the United Nations that creates drug policy. Um, and yeah, we're going to have um, three speakers in total, including myself. So we're going to have Orshi Feher, who is our uh, Global Fellow for Policy, International Policy, uh, and Ruby Lawler, who is our University College Cork chapter leader and a member of the Youth Rise International Working Group. Um, and myself, and I'm Roisin Downs, the Global Program Coordinator for SSDP. Um, yeah, so we're going to start off with Orshi's going to tell us a little bit about what, how the UN works in regards to drug policy and the structures that happen there and the actual changes that happened at CND this year or the changes that didn't happen. <laughs> so I'll pass off to Orshi now. Hey, uh, thanks Roisin and thanks Seth. Um, so I am uh, gonna really quickly talk to you about what is CND, where we were at at the beginning of the month, uh, just as the crisis was uh, beginning to hit. It was a special experience. I'm not really going to go into details because uh, we have a uni Youth United Nations Advocacy Handbook, or these words in some kind of order that tells you everything that you need to know. It's 17 pages, so it really is me talking to you for 70 pages about the UN. But what you really need to remember right now is the CND stands for Commission on Narcotic Drugs. It's a functional body of the Economic and Social uh, Council and um, that is part of the UN system and ultimately they are the ones who have the mandate to make decisions about drug policies internationally which means um, scheduling substances um, assigning mandates to other agencies and a lot of um, international cooperation, a lot of where money goes and who gets that money and what for. Um, and then maybe some, another agency that is uh, important to mention that you can Google if you have time is the International Narcotics Control Board that we call INCB for short. And they are the body that follows up on how the decisions made at CND are being implemented in each member state. So um, I've said this <laughs> uh, word already, member state, what does that mean? That just means nations that are recognized by the United Nations system as an independent um, group of people <laughs> uh, in a given geographical location. And they are the ones who uh, vote at the CND and then in the end guide the CND to make any decisions. So for you to kind of have an idea about where, what we're going to talk about, where we've spent a whole week, is a very fancy building in Vienna, Austria. It's called the Vienna International Center, the United Nations offices, where the United Nations Office on Drugs and Crime is housed. It is a very retro building with a bunch of uh, floors and um, a bunch of labyrinthy pathways for us to get lost in and feel very small. Uh, and there are three stages within the CND that um, you kind of have to understand to follow the next uh, speaker's stories. Um, we have the plenary session. That is the main stage of the CND where statements are being made, votes are being voted, um, decisions are decided. And that's just a large room with every member state representing themselves with one or two people. Then you have another room, also really large, also similar about representation. It is called the Committee of the Whole. We call it COW for short. And this is where member states um, discuss resolutions, wordings. This is where they go to breakout rooms for their informal dialogues that happen behind closed doors. And this is the place that they come back to and they present what they have agreed on. 
So we have the plenary, we have the cow, and then you have a conference kind of arena where um, several side events happen. Side events are um, basically just breakout sessions for um, various topics to be delved into more deeply. And then these side events are hosted by the agencies, by member states, and by civil society. So as part of the Economic and Social Council, SSDP is allowed to host an event, which we did this year. Um, we kind of lent this, um, this privilege to uh, the Paradigma Coalition, which is uh, something that Roshin is going to talk to you uh, about uh, in more depth in a bit. And um, yeah, we have plenary, cow, side events, and um, cafeteria. <laughs> So something else that I wanted to talk about is um, the NGO forum. So we have these three, three stages where the big things are happening and then you have something else only for civil society where you get to have an informal dialogue with the chair of the CND, with the heads of other um, agencies or whoever the civil society <laughs> representatives managed to convince for that year. And then, um, I think I've mentioned all of the basics. Uh, the last talking point for me before I hand over to Rasheen for you to kind of have an idea of how we are presenting these spaces is um, the delegation uh, of SSDP and how, what is the process for you or for us to be there. And so as I mentioned, we have the privilege of sending a delegation to these um, events. We have a, a limit of 10 people, uh, including our exec executive director. So we have basically nine spaces for people to take there. And then you will have to get in touch with me, your global fellow who will uh, kind of probe to see what would be the function for you, where you can best excel, enjoy yourself, and also have something to um, kind of contribute to our advocacy um, efforts. And then Rasheen and I kind of hold your hand through the process of booking tickets, looking for a place, um, dress code, registering, all sorts of administrational um, stuff. I hope that I have said everything that I need to set you up, Rasheen. I am handing over now. Brilliant. Thanks, Orshi. Yeah, thanks for like outlining kind of what happens at the UN and kind of how it works. What I'm going to talk about a little bit here is going to be how SSDP works and how youth representation uh, through civil society works at uh, the United Nations. So there is this fantastic coalition that I'm sure everyone in SSDP has heard the name and still doesn't know what it is. <laughs> and that's Paradigma. Paradigma is this, um, during the United Nations General Assembly um, special session on drugs, which is known as UNGAS, <laughs> and I've always known it as UNGAS, and I think that's the first time I ever said it out. But um, the, uh, during UNGAS, they noticed that there was a really weak representation of um, youth, uh, civil society and youth in general at um, the CND, but in United Nations drug policy creation in general. Um, because of this, OSF, which is the Open Society Foundation, chose to fund a, um, a youth convening in Bangkok in 2017. Um, and this is where Paradigma was born. Uh, we had youth organizations from all, of the, all over the world, and not just youth organizations, but like key people who were uh, involved in youth movements in, those con in different countries or different parts of the world as well, came there to figure out how we could work together to organize better to uh, represent better at the UN, but also to build like a stronger advocacy globally for um, young people to advocate for drug policy, because we're so often quoted as the reason to justify harmful drug policies and giving us the room to actually be there, voice our needs and that sort of thing is really important. <laughs> uh, so that's where Paradigma was born. SSDP was one of the founding members of Paradigma and has always played like a very big role in it, or she has been one of has been basically our leading person in Paradigma for the last year and previous to that Jake um, Jake Agliata who I'm sure many of you know um, played a huge role in that as well and um, so how does Paradigma change what we do at the UN so when we when Ruby talks in a few minutes you'll see a little bit about what it's like to be an individual or an individual civil society representative at the UN but what uh, being in coalition with all these youth organizations from around the world, it allows us to amplify our voice, to organize better, 
and um, to take different actions that are more forceful throughout. So for example, this year we had the opportunity, there was a youth resolution that was proposed by Russia and uh, various other member states that was about youth involvement in drug prevention. Uh, it had a huge amount of like problematic language and um, in general, it was a pretty rough resolution. Um, it was slightly torn apart on in the cow and it wasn't, it wasn't great. And through Paradigma, we could put together our response to that and uh, you know, publicize what the youth perspective globally was from a civil society perspective on drug prevention, youth involvement in drug prevention, which was like a really powerful thing for us to be able to do because individually all of our organizations don't have the same impact as a globally recognized coalition. Um, yeah, and then that that is what we do. <laughs> The, as well, the kind of overarching thing that has come up with Paradigm in the last um, year, two years, was that uh, we don't only want to focus on advocating at the United Nations, there is like a major limit on how civil society can make an impact there. So we want to take advantage of the CND and of uh, the United Nations to train in um, stronger youth advoca uh, advocates and give people the opportunity to see a global perspective of where countries stand on drug policy and that sort of thing. Um, and like basically make this movement a lot stronger and make uh, youth uh, advocates across the world a lot stronger. Cool, so that's Paradigma. Um, I think I'm gonna hand over to Ruby now, who's gonna tell us a little bit more about what it's like to be an individual attending the CND for the first time. Go ahead. <laughs> Um, hi, thanks so much Roshin and Roshi for setting that up for me. Um, so yeah, this year was my first time ever at CND and it was, I was kind of a latecomer to it but Orshi and Roshin held my hand like they said and got me there all the same um, and the, the main thing that really helped me before I went was studying the youth advocacy um, handbook. It kind of laid out exactly what I was to expect and then discussing it with other members of Paradigm uh, made it really beneficial for me to understand what I was walking into um, because the United Nations sounds like such a scary thing, um, such a massive deal. And it is, um, especially from my side of it, I come from uh, learning international development. So what we learn about is the United Nations all the time. And then I was going and I was like, oh God, <laughs> what does this mean? What am I supposed to be like? So that was, it was challenging heading there, but I also got a lot of support along the way. Um, then, yeah, so being there, um, it was an incredible opportunity. I got to meet so many people, um, but more than anything, I got to just look and just observe. Um, there wasn't so much that I wanted to or could do this year. I wanted to go and learn how it works and then make inputs where I could, like they said. Um, so I did that. I went, I watched the, like, the plenary, I watched the cow, I listened to the member states discussing things. And more than anything, I got to understand what the countries. Uh, really felt about drug policy and what their angles were. It's hard to look through every single country's drug policy and understand it, but being able to see which kind of groupings they were setting into preventative or harm reduction and what kind of angles they were coming at to the CND was great. Um, one of the most interesting things for me was actually the scheduling of substances. And a lot of people say that's one of the most boring things, um, but for me, I don't, I don't understand chemistry very well. Um, and I guess it gave me a look into how things are scheduled and how drugs get scheduled in the first place um, and how they all just get scheduled straight away and I just need to feel like they get discussed. So uh, that was really interesting for me to see. I don't understand chemical names and stuff, but that was so good. Um, another, thing for me, <laughs> um, another thing for me was that I got to meet with delegations. Um, so I got to meet with the Irish delegation alongside Roisin and um, Ailish, who's the head of Youth Rise. And we discuss with them the current policies that they have, the policies that are incoming, um, the decriminalization kind of decriminalization thing that Ireland did recently, um, and talk to them about how they are planning on implementing it and give from the youth civil society opinion on what we think about it and what they could do to make sure it happens in the right way that actually helps people and doesn't harm more. Um, another thing I got to do was I got to listen to the other side of civil society. So that was a major thing for me because most of the time you feel like you're fighting what the government's saying. Um, and I got to sit there and listen to what the other civil society was saying. So we, we were there as, I guess, the harm reduction, drug policy reformers. But then there was the guys who were there fighting for preventative measures, more preventative and kind of more punitive side of things. 
Um, so the most interesting thing for me, I think, overall, was going and listening to their discussions and actually having conversations with them and hearing the, the language they're using to fight against, to know, I guess, better update ourselves and what we're saying, um, and also just to be respectful and listen to what they're saying, um, and then know what, yeah, I guess just know the argument and the angle that they take to deliver their messages. So that was a really good thing as well. Also put a face to the big mean, scary people fighting against us. Um, and it wasn't just the government we were fighting this time, it was actually other people that we just got to discuss and it wasn't a fight. So that was really nice as well. Um, and then finally, I, I'd say the, a big thing for me, I've been congratulated a lot on it, is um, my meeting with the Ugandan delegation. I lived there previously last year working for the Human Rights Centre as part of an internship for my degree. And um, so I'd been done a lot of research while working in the Human Rights Centre on uh, Ugandan's laws and there wasn't a lot of information out there around drug policy. I hooked up with this organization called the Ugandan Harm Reduction Network and was working with them a little bit and I'm actually moving back there in a few months to continue working with them um, and just volunteering, seeing what I can do around the office, see if they need a hand and learning what drug policy looks like on an international scale. Um, so yeah, I met with the Ugandan delegation while I was there. I hunted them down, found them, sat them down for a meeting and uh, we discussed, I guess, the policies that they have there, the fact they're writing a new law in at the moment um and what that was going to look like and i guess we i got to kind of talk to them about har what harm reduction means and why i'm coming to the un which kind of sparked a conversation about um possibly writing in or working towards a decriminalization model in uh uganda so the man i was speaking to christopher he was from the ugandan government um and he was saying that he would like to see Uganda moved towards something like Portugal did and was interested in finding out how they got there in the first place. So um, I'm hoping to work with him to figure that out. Um, and then we had a second meeting and that went really well. And we, he decided that he wants to try um, join in with harm reduction and support people in the country. And he admitted that he knows that uh, just putting people in jail doesn't work. So that's the kind of interactions that I got to have at CND. Um, I got to have one-on-one -on -one interactions with people I would never have the chance to, and I now have contacts people I would never have the chance to have contact with, I to listen to the other side. Um, I got to hear their side of it, and I got to see what countries really feel about drug policy and see the, how it works in the makings. So, yeah, that was my experience at CND this year. Great. Ruby, thank you so much for sharing, and that was the... Uh... It's, it's really important for us to share like what the actual experience is and what it's like for an individual to be there. Um, it's unfortunate that Clement couldn't join us for this panel today because um, he, Clement is from Ghana. He's one of our board members in SSDP and I'm sure many of you guys know, the, know him. And if you don't, I encourage you to get to know him because um, it was a real big success that we were able to get his visa to come and be on our delegation and come to Vienna to advocate at the UN, but he really took advantage of the opportunity so much. And um, like he met with the African Union, he met with many delegations. I mean, the whole time he was running back and forth, just like being like, hey, I gotta find this person, I don't have time, which was amazing. Um, and hopefully he might be able to join us later. Uh, but if not, there will be a blog post coming out soon about his experiences as well, so that you can see what it's like from uh, people from different regions across the world as well. Um, otherwise, I'd like to ta thank our speakers for sharing and pass over to Seth. 